there is your guilt head brain. That is what all the fuss was about. Now, although this one isn't a massive one, it's still a nice size one. Here is the guilt head brain from earlier. Now, all I've done is I've just gutted it. I've just taken all, taken all the guts out the inside. When I dispatched it, I bled it and I've gutted it. And all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take all the scales off. Now, it is easier to scale them before you gut them. But I didn't have my helper here to be able to video it. So I'm doing what I can. Now, you can just use the back of a knife and all you're gonna do is these scales on here is you just turn them backwards. Now, let me see how they're lifting off. But I did learn a technique from a recent video where I went to a fish filleters and you take the fish instead of scaling it like this and firing scales everywhere if you put it underwater and just rub the scales So by scaling it underwater, you're not firing scales everywhere like that. You're just using the back of a teaspoon to just rub all the scales up against the silt. Now be careful because gilt heads do have spines. And you don't want to rub one of them up underneath your fingernail. You can see. see where all the scales have come off compared to the other side? Just do that all over. There you can see all the scales have been taken off. Just like that. And I don't know if you can see them all in the bottom here. But there's no you can see them all leaving. You can see them all in the bottom of the bucket now. Rather than firing them everywhere all over yourself. So if you had to do this at home, just do it in a bucket in a garden and then they're not, they're not going everywhere. We've prepped the fish and now we've come up to meet Jim at his allotment. Now we do use quite a lot of ingredients, of herbs, of that type of thing from Jim's allotment. We've been asked in quite a few of the videos to give you a bit of a walk around. I'm going to see if I can find him, he's somewhere hiding behind a bush down there. Hello. In order to do Jim and the allotment justice, I have made this into a separate video which will be tagged into the description of here and posted on the Fish Locker Workshop channel. Right, we've made it back to Spargo's kitchen. Jim's just getting washed up. We'll have a quick look through what we've got. There is Mr. Breen with no scales. The potatoes that we harvested from the allotment the other week. These onions came from the allotments, how long ago was it? Dug those up about three weeks ago and they've been drying, stored and drying. We have the borage, the runner beans, those were harvested yesterday, the those were from today and everything else. We picked tomatoes around. this morning and apples, thyme, borage and a few runner beans. So I'll get everything prepped up and then we'll come back to the cooking process. Just a strong pair of scissors taking the spines. You, that's spines it John, here. you hold that up for me. And the fins off. You can leave them on can't you? Could you have had a na no, nasty experience no with... Reason, no the, reason to leave them on. It's something less to peel off. When Jim did get a bass spine right up one of his fingers and uh, right up a fingernail and had to go to the doctors and they dug it out. But yeah, it was an unpleasant experience. Right, we'll just give him a rinse off. A uh, bit liberal with some olive oil. I've uh, got some sea salt and ground black pepper in there. I'm not going to slash the flesh because it's not a large fish. I haven't got a lemon, so I would put some lemon in there. 
put a knob of butter. There. Oven is on, just heating it. I'll let that come up to 180 and I'll give that fish 15 minutes and see how we're doing. Olive oil in there. Nothing too hot. Onions. Sea salt and some brown black pepper. I've got three cloves of garlic. Put a bit of sea salt in there. Just grind the garlic up. This is thyme that we picked this morning, and I'm just holding the top of the stalk. The stalk is quite woody, so if you do that, you just get the leaves and the. So you're just discarding the stalk. Yeah. Otherwise, we would be flossing our teeth with it. Tomatoes, I'm quartering them and taking pulp out of the middle. Is that what, why is that sort of fluid? Well, don't want the. I don't want the vegetable dish too wet or too seedy. Smaller yellow ones. I'm going to leave. I'm going to cut in half, but not. DC. I don't have as much. In them, don't have as much. See, but I don't necessarily want all of that in the in the dish. I wonder if it'll cool it. It them. Quite lovely. And into that pan, I'll put a dessert spoon of tomato puree and just a splash of water. I put a squeeze of tomato puree. A little bit of water, and I cut the cold jet in half and just cut it into some thick slices. Oh, and I put a little chilli in, don't necessarily want it. Chilli today, I just want a little hint, so I'm just going to cook it. Um, I've got some basil growing downstairs. After 20 minutes, I'll just rip some basil leaves in. So we'll come back for that. But for now, that fish can go in the oven. Wash the new potatoes, just give them a rub with the kitchen scourer, some salted water, and some of the forage leaves. Pan with some butter. Put a little water and I'm just going to prep the apples that we picked this morning. I just sweat the apple down and then when it's cooled we'll mix it with the blackberries and put a crumble topping right over the top of it. Right, just enough sugar. I don't like things particularly sweet. And the crumble topping will be quite sweet. These will go back to the allotment. It'll just need a little more water, I would imagine. The mixture swells like this, the sweetness of the... The, yes, the sweetness of the tomato is incredible, isn't it? Of the, the apples and all that, it smells up the Right, we'll go downstairs and pick some basil. Right, we'll just pick some basil. It's inside because it's turned a bit co cold, rather autumnal. Oh, and we, these are our micro leaves, so when we're having salad. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that smells incredible. It, it does, doesn't it? It's just wonderful. Just no resemblance to. The shop for oh, plants. Um, yes, we have trays of small salads 
outside which I just snip as we want to eat them and then we keep these these will be ready to plot off that's one of your <laughs> previous stars of fish locker and there's the handful of basil we've picked this is now going to smell incredible we shall have the neighbours banging on the windows demanding to be fed and the beans so we just top and tail and we'll just blanch these in boiling water with sea salt black pepper knob of butter and they will take a scant couple of minutes less than five minutes I've just put a little sprinkling of nutmeg and cinnamon in there and they are softer oh. and we'll let those cool and then we can add the blackberries and the raspberries and we shall have our allotment crumble these are the blackberries there's a couple of raspberries we picked just had them in water with a little salt get any creepy crawlies out and those are the blackberries I picked yesterday from the same bushes and then put those on the top so everything we've got here at the moment has all been grown for our porridge isn't it yeah everything has come Apart from, from the tomato puree and the butter everything has come from from the allotment mostly picked by carol grown, mostly grown, grown by, grown by ca carol from seed i should say we're probably ready for this fish tank but it's all nice Hold it against the backbone. Now be careful with this bit, yep. otherwise less experienced people could burn their lips. Yep. Okay. What a bloody hell. Yes, like that. that's ready. <laughs> but now we know it's cooked. And this is the girlies tree. So while all that's been going on, the girls are having a cream tea. This is what's going on. Can I just help you understand a great British debate? A classic cream tea dish. Scones, jam and cream. I'm not saying it's coming to civil war, but <laughs> what, jam cream first, first, cream first or up. cream first. I say that common sense prevail. The scones are warm from the oven. If we put clotted cream, this is Rodder's Cornish clotted cream, it's thick and unctuous. If you put that into a warm scone going to melt and return mm. to liquid. Put the jam first, it well, acts as a little it's heat barrier. The thing that's the so easiest to spread, isn't it, as well? Common sense prevail and want to enjoy a cream tea at its best. Jam first. Oggy, <laughs> oggy, oggy. Oi, oi, oi. They are. I'm going to change the taste of this. It, it is quite lovely, but I think you need, just need to fill up the taste a little bit. So I'm going to put sprinkle a little sugar in there and a splash of balsamic vinegar. The sugar and the vinegar will really make the tomatoes. That's interesting because you, you're mixing both sweet and sour, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it has a terrific effect on tomato base. Dishes, especially the tomato soup. So don't need much, so I'm just going to sprinkle it from the jar. So there, there's, not, there's not more than a couple of baseballs well, there, is there's, a, there's a good teaspoon there. Having established that the fish is cooked, we'll just do that. Get some of that lovely juice on there. We pop the potatoes. They will space themselves in those lovely 
buttery juices. I'll just peel the skin back. And there we go. Down the centre line. It smells wonderful. It is a superb fish. Trying not to use my fingers. There we are. And you could get four. Only a wee fish, but you could get yeah. four off that quite easily. Yeah, and the, the benefit for doing it like this rather than filleting is there is absolutely no waste in absolutely. filleting, is there? Because you could literally you could pick the carcass clean. And all we'd do is, once we've taken that fillet off there, is you can just lift the backbone up, Tom and Jerry style, can't yes. you? And there, as you can see, once you take the two fillets off, you just literally go Sorry. that left after you. Surplus. Just pull the little rib bones away. Proper Tom and Jerry style, <laughs> and then that just leaves mm. the two fillets on the bottom. Time that we put in to the bottom. It's really yummy. Mm -hmm. Get all that out of the way. Let's eat. This is from picking brambles earlier on. Now, this is absolutely delicious. Just. We're talking about it there, it's got a, a unique flavour, isn't it? But it's very delicate. Yeah. It's a fish on its own, like John Dory. You, mm. you can't compare it to anything. It is just out of this world. That ratatouille is delicious. Isn't all it? of it. Mm. Just saying, all of it's come from catched, mm. isn't it? catched, caught, caught, grown, or foraged. And the dessert is welcoming up. Mm. Right, we're just assembling the crumble topping and in this bowl we have 200 grams of plain flour and 100 grams of cold butter which Carol is rubbing in. I've got approximately 100 grams of caster sugar and there is some sugar in the fruit but I'm just going to put a little bit over. I must say we, we like our crumbles slightly tart so feel free to add more sugar. And the last ingredient, when it's all mixed together, is a couple of large handfuls of rolled oats, regular porridge oats. Apparently this is called the rubbing in method. It's just no sniggers, thank you. Mixing the cold butter in with the flour until it's like breadcrumbs. That's it. Favourite bit. That's also quite a contentious subject, isn't it? It's a ratio of yeah. fruit, to, fruit to crumble. I prefer the depth, depth of topping. Yeah, yeah. I prefer if you more get a crumble. crumble, don't you? When you get like <laughs> two thirds crumble and one third fruit, I feel like I've been cheated. Oh, yeah. I like the crumble top myself. Mm. And then you put a coating of sugar on top of that. No, no, that's it. And then into the oven on a tray in case it spills. You haven't got a job of cleaning the bottom, bottom of your oven then. So stick it on a tray. And how long for that? Uh, that's uh, about 180, 190, it would depend if you've got a fan oven. And that might take nearly an hour because it's a lot bigger. Okay. Thank you. We're no longer at Spago's Kitchen anymore. We needed to get back. So we brought the crumble home to cook. Now, I have tried some of it already and it is absolutely delicious. I mean, look at that. I do love brambles. Bramble crumble, bramble pie, bramble tart. We used to make ice, ice lollies with them as well. But yeah, I do love this time of year for brambles. Uh, I'm going to get some of that in a bowl with some custard and I'm going to sit down with James. But yes, everything today has been caught, grown or foraged. I hope you've enjoyed the video. We really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm going to enjoy some of that now. All the very best. See you later. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our Catch and Cook and Spargo's Kitchen playlists.